Um, I just want to thank Jim Fain for bringing forward this motion. Um, and first of all, I just want to touch on the budget because every year on budget day, we go through the same farce again and again, where the government announces a high level figure for investment in disability service. Uh, this year, they claimed it was 336 million, only for us to find out days later that this money is largely to pay for services already provided and that the actual amount allocated to expanding our threadbare supports is far, far lower. In reality, only 42 million for the expansion of disability services is in this year's budget. So that's actually a 22 million euro decrease on last year's budget. I'd like to hear an explanation from government as to what the justification for dropping the amount of additional funding is. The Disability Capacity Review published in 2021 quantifies the current and future need for disability support services. One of the key issues highlighted was, and I quote, significant levels of unmet need for disability services and that changes in the size and age profile of the disability service population will add to unmet need over the coming decade. Addressing demographic changes alone would not be sufficient as the current level of unmet need is not sustainable. There is a need to spend between 550 million to 1 billion extra each year to meet the needs of the growing and aging population between now and 2032. This funding is needed for residential services and for supported housing, adult day programmes, multidisciplinary therapy services, personal assistance and respite. The Disability Capacity Review outlined the situation and it was up to the government to respond quickly and sufficiently. There have been four separate budgets since that review was published and none of them have come close to meeting those funding targets. The last budget only allocated an extra 42 million of additional expenditure for investment in disability services. The Social Democrats allocated a total package of 660 million of additional funding for disability with 127.5 million provided for expansion of services, ensuring adequate funding for the huge capacity gaps that exist in services. The Disability Capacity Review was a stark reminder of just how far behind the rest of society disabled people have fallen in terms of basic community and residential services. But instead of ramping up investment, as their own report recommends, this government decided to wind it down. The Taoiseach actually promised that this budget would make disabled people, quote, feel seen. Does he genuinely believe that slashing the funding allocation for additional services by that much makes people feel seen? All the while, nearly 13,500 children are waiting for initial appointments with children's disability network teams. While disabled people in Ireland face the highest unemployment rates of disabled people in Europe. When poverty rates among disabled people are three times higher than the general population. When the ERSI is warning that this government's budget will actually push more disabled people and older people into poverty. Is that what prioritising disability looks like to this government? What exactly, I often wonder, is the point of a new cabinet subcommittee if these are the kind of ideas that it produces? Political choices are being made at that subcommittee and at the cabinet table. Political choices about what to spend money on and how much. Political choices that led to disability services becoming threadbare and dysfunctional at a time of record surpluses. It seems like the only thing the disabled people and their families are guaranteed from the state are waiting lists, waiting lists for an assessment of need, waiting lists for therapies, waiting lists for school places. Successive governments have repeatedly failed people with disabilities and this government is no different. There was an opportunity in this budget to put your money where your mouth is when it comes to disability, to invest in the services and the supports which will lift people out of poverty, to tackle the structural issues which are at the root of social isolation and unemployment rates. But instead, we've seen another missed opportunity to make a real difference to people's lives. Failing to address the structural barriers which result in disabled people being unable to access services, unable to access employment, unable to access suitable accommodation and education, failing to address the cost of disability with a weekly 
cost of disability payment, which the Social Democrats have long advocated for, instead of providing a one-off payment of 400 euro. Disability isn't a one-off. It's consistent. It's a day-to-day -day cost that adds up to between an average of nine and 13,000 a year, not including, that's not including inflation or the rising cost of living. And we know in some instances, it's a lot more than that. If this budget truly attempted to tackle the rates of poverty and deprivation among disabled people, then it should have addressed the cost of disability with more than a one-off payment. The next government needs to create a pathway so that by a combination of disability allowance and cost of disability payments, people are brought above the poverty line and reach at least the minimum essential standards of living. I have to say that if Fianna Gael, Fianna Fáil and the Green Party won't sufficiently fund disability services at a time of these record surpluses, I have no faith that they ever will. On to the optional protocol. So Ireland ratified the UN Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities in 2018. We were the last country in the EU to do that. And six years on, we haven't ratified the optional protocol. The optional protocol, I think, is poorly named. Far from being an optional addition, it's a really crucial tool for the implementation of the UNCRPD. All states that signed the convention are obliged to take steps to ensure that disabled people can exercise their human rights. When states fail to uphold these rights, the optional protocol is there to allow individuals to hold the state accountable for that. It empowers people with disabilities to stand up against discriminatory laws and practices by the state, which is why it's so vital to ratify the optional protocol as soon as possible. One of the government's excuses for not ratifying in previous years was delays at UN level um, and that ratification had been expected to follow Ireland's first periodic review under the convention. But these delays weren't news to me or to the ministers. Uh, the Disability Matters Committee received briefings from IREC in June 2021 outlining the backlog in the UN and the need for the government to bring forward their plan for ratification. Secretary General of the Department of Children acknowledged those delays at the time and stated that the department would be very open, open to ratifying the convention much sooner and outlined that the original time frame they were assuming the UN reporting cycle would be done and ratification would be required was the middle of 2022. So how are we here now in October 2024 still waiting for ratification? How is it that only in August 2023 did the minister seek external legal advice as to what work needed to be done to come into compliance with the Convention, that only in March of this year was an interdepartmental group being set up, and only now, with weeks, if not days, left in this government, are we hearing that the protocol might finally be ratified, with days left. <laughs> Over the years, we've heard from different experts, including the UN Special Rapporteur, who have clearly said the optional protocol could be ratified in the morning. Disabled people shouldn't have had to wait this long, they shouldn't have to wait any longer for the ability to vindicate their rights and hold the state accountable for its failures. The government still hasn't given us the exact date um, and an explanation as to why it's been left this late, basically for the next government to have a ratified optional protocol. Why is it that disability services and disability rights are shoved to the bottom of the priority list again and again? It's abundantly clear that despite the rhetoric this government as a whole is not interested in actually delivering the services that disabled people are entitled to. If the government put the principles and demands of the UN Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities at the core of policy, it would lead to greatly improved outcomes for disabled people, for their carers and for their families. Putting the UN CRPD at the heart of policy is what the Social Democrats pledge to do. This would be achieved by taking a rights-based approach which recognises the roles of disabled persons organisations. We would implement reforms in governance and accountability of the provision of disability services. We would implement, enact and commence key legislation and strategies to promote and protect the rights, quality of life and the independence of disabled people. And we would invest in inclusion to put the disability sector on a sustainable financial footing. My party is fully committed to improving the lives of people with disabilities. Because too often, a lack of funding and a lack of services mean that disabled people and their families 
are being forced to seek charity and to campaign and fight for their right to just live a dignified life. Disability services or the inadequacy of them is one of the issues which I'm contacted about practically daily from people across Cork Southwest and beyond. Sadly, we don't have a rights-based approach to disability. We have a budget-based model. Services, supports and opportunities you, are decided based on government budgets, not human rights.